Hello, my friends. This is Andy coming to you live from Orange County. <laughs> and uh, it is a Sunday. What a day. What are actually a couple, <laughs> couple days that I've had. It has been fantastic. And um, today is no different. The, the thing that came to mind today for this particular show, hello, people that are coming on and watching. Uh, go ahead and comment, please. That's the way the show gets shared out as weak as uh, Facebook is and YouTube and Twitter and all those uh, platforms, Twi Twitch, who actually blocked my broadcast yesterday because of the title. Um, it still helps to have you comment. It helps to have you share and like and do all the stuff and hit the little emo, em em what are they called? emotions. Is that what it's called? Those little things that hearts and the thumbs up and that kind of stuff. Mostly hearts and thumbs up. Try not to hit the, the mean face or the crying baby thing. Um, but um, today has to, a lot to do with uh, truth. And I know I've been talking about it for several weeks, maybe even several months, is that the truth is, seems to be the kryptonite for the left, for Democrats and BLM and uh, uh, Black Lives Matter um, and Antifa. I think I said BLM and Black Lives Matter. Uh, Antifa. Uh, somehow the truth just seems to escape them or is not very interesting to them. And the lie is way more important. Uh, we learned in my book, which is not present. I'm always looking for it. The How you kill 11 million people. You lie to them and you lie big and you lie often. Uh, eventually they will believe it. And that is pretty much their motto. Uh, that has been the motto uh, since the days of um, uh, Marxism and communists started many, many moons ago. And in the book, um, common Sen uh, Color, Common Sense and Communism, um, uh, 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 again, in his book, he says the same thing. That was written in 1948 talking about the left, talking about Marxists and communism, that the thing that they need to remember to do is lie and lie often and make the lie big. The bigger the lie, the more likely they're uh, actually going to believe it. So we're just going to talk a little bit like that uh, about this um, in regard to why is the truth so hard uh, and difficult for the left. Hey, Deb, nice to see you. Um, uh, but one thing I want to do before I take this off the screen, that is right up above me right here, usapatriotproject.com. Please go to that website right there, that the, the .com, and that is where you will uh, donate uh, to help us get the uh, the project off the ground and get us broadcasting remotely. And then in a static, we're going to change the whole way that this place looks uh, to uh, to further the message of a conservative Christian platform um, and really support uh, the politicians that are out there that support the conservative uh, uh, um, uh, Christian platform. Uh, and then other people that are in our uh, space, including pastors, uh, counselors, coaches, anybody that really seems to be on board with uh, turning our country around and bringing it back to its Christian roots uh, is, I think, an important thing that we need to do, especially right now when you have some places in the United States, some churches that are really pushing it. And you can see that there's growth in those churches. Our church at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, that my family goes to, has seen um, a huge growth. As a matter of fact, he said, can you stop coming to the church? Because <laughs> there's not enough parking. There's not enough space. Um, you have other churches that are doing the same thing. You got Mark Driscoll over in Scottsdale, Arizona. Same thing. Um, and then you have other churches that are closing. The churches that are not uh, teaching biblically. And um, not staying true to God's word, you see them having less and a decline in their um, attendance and the people that are following them. And they're looking for other churches. Now, that's happening here, too. I know some churches here that have gone to the to the Black Lives Matter, gone to the Antifa way of thinking. Uh, I have some people that I used to go to church that um, have these really odd thoughts that I'm going to I'm going to vote for Biden. Like, that is an odd thought considering. And I'm going to show this one more time here. This is. Uh, I just kind of rearranged it just for uh, three things, three, three main things that are truthful. This is fact, right? You got the Democrats and liberals who don't mind killing 350,000 children in one year, but yet you'll hear them say, well, the president's killed 250,000 people with COVID-19, which is also a lie. So both are a lie, but they seem to be celebrating like uh, um, uh, Quo, Andrew Cuomo over in New York, when he was able to get um, uh, legislation passed to be able to kill babies all the way up to the ninth month. Um, late term abortion, uh, all the way up to birth. The, the mother could have a discussion with the doctor and say, you know, the baby's about ready to come out, but you can still abort the kid, that kind of thing. And they were celebrating it. As a matter of fact, they lit up um, the, the, the trade center uh, because of the boat, boat. But that is okay. They celebrate that, the 350,000 babies that are killed annually. Uh, but somehow the president is, is the worst president on the planet when he did not necessarily kill 250,000 people with the COVID-19, which again, he, uh, he did way more than any other president ever would have. And there's plenty of uh, examples of that if we were to go through. I, I've done a number of shows on it. There's no other president that has done as much as he has for a pandemic. Um, deportations. Um, the Obama-Biden administration deported and arrested more illegal aliens than Donald Trump has in his uh, four years in office. 
And then you have, yes, uh, the Russian collusion. It was the Democrats who colluded with the Russians, not the Republicans. And so the lies, at least these three big lies right now, are the biggest lies that I can point to right now that we have proof. And we can, I can show you any, any number of ways if you want to see that. But uh, there's a faction of our country that still decides that uh you know we're gonna we're gonna go with the lie uh we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna vote with the democratic party um and then again i don't think the numbers are as high as we have been uh, told by the media either. uh right you're being told that uh that biden got eight eighty million votes which is just totally ridiculous for a guy who never went out and actually campaigned you're gonna tell me that he got more votes than ba- obama did and everybody seemed to love obama no matter how corrupt he was um you're telling me that biden got more votes than obama you, even the left, do not believe that and do not think that's true. All right, so I want to go with, I didn't read the Daily Devotional today, but I'm going to bring it up because there's the last paragraph in today's Daily Devotional, which I think speaks directly to, um, I'm sorry, I'm just getting rid of my frame here, um, speaks directly to what it is I'm going to continue. I'm going to show two other pastors. One pastor is going to be talking biblically. The other pastor is my pastor, Jack Hibbs, who's going to be talking to politically in the church at the beginning of today's message, which is also biblical, but it's a little bit more slanted on the political side of things. So let's first look at the um, the devotion for the day. The devotion for the day is called the supremacy of Jesus Christ. He will glorify me, uh, John 16, 14. But let's go to the last paragraph where it says, Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will glorify me. John 16, 13 through 14. When I commit myself to the revealed truth of the, of the New Testament, I receive from God the gift of the Holy Spirit, who then begins interpreting to me what Jesus did. The Spirit of God does in me internally all, the, all that Jesus Christ did for me externally. Now, obviously, what they're talking about, I think, um, it's a little bit more clearly. When they're talking about the truth, they're talking about the truth of Christianity, of God, of Jesus, Jesus dying, uh, you know, dying on the cross, being crucified, dying for our sins, and then um, uh, coming back to life uh, in the form of God and going to heaven and now waiting for him to come back and take us off this miserable planet that we're on. So I think more that he's talking about that kind of truth, but the truth is still the truth. The truth is obviously is important. Speaking the truth is what God wants us to do. Uh, and it's very clear that the Democrats and uh, 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 the liberals have no interest in the truth. They don't care that it's demonic. They don't care that what they're doing is destroying this country based on lies. These three lies alone are huge, right? If it was just these lies, you know, maybe we can get through it. But there's so many lies that they tell on a daily basis. The media has no interest in the truth, right? When we're, when we're looking at the, um, the computer, like the laptop computer, like this one that Hunter Biden um, left at the, at the repair shop, with all the truths that are coming out of that computer, the media wants you to know none of them. So the denial of showing you or the blocking of showing you facts and truths is also a lie. The fact that they're hiding it from you, the fact that Twitter and Facebook and YouTube will not allow anything in regard to the investigation involving that laptop and, and refusing to show you is also a lie. The fact that they're, they're not telling the truth about the election and what everything that's happening in the election, every um, um, uh, corrupt thing that they did to, to change the votes, to bring in uh, these uh, invalid uh, mail-in votes, all the stuff that they're doing, again, refusing to show you CNN, MSDNC, MSNBC, whatever you want to call them. Um, if it's um, ABC, NBC, CBS, if it's uh, whatever show that you like to watch other than, not even Fox is telling you the truth <laughs> in many cases. There's certain personalities on Fox that do, but there's many that don't. That the refusal of showing you what is actually ha- happening in Philadelphia and Arizona and some of these other states that um, uh, Michigan um, that have voter fraud, the fact that they're not showing you what's happening, again, is a form of lying and not telling the truth. So all of it, I believe, as I begin to study more in, in, in relationship to the uh, Christian uh, faith, that uh, the, the, the aspect of lying is what's controlling our country and, and, and simply destroying our, com- our country. And the media is, uh, has a huge part uh, in this, this part of, of what's destroying our country. Let me show you what the Mark Dris- Driscoll talks about here. It's, gonna, it's, it's short. The other one I'm going to show you with Jack Hibbs is, is a little bit longer. I'm going to save it till the end, and it'll be the last seven or eight minutes of the broadcast uh, about what he's talked about in relationship about um, the media trying to tell you that uh, Joe Biden won the, the, the presidency. That that is lie. That is not true. So I'm going to show you that last. But let me let me just tell you or show you what um, Mark Driscoll said. Uh Oh, what happened to it? Oh, there it is. Sorry about that. I thought I lost it for a second. All right. So let me go ahead and bring this down. I'm going to bring you up this little message. It's it's short, I think, 
sometimes I get caught up in the videos, especially with Mark Driscoll, and I and I want to watch the whole thing. So um, what I remember that I want to show you is about two to three minutes long. Again, I may go a little bit longer because sometimes I get into it and don't want to take it off. Uh, first, let me look at this comment coming up here. Hey, Dixie, nice to see you. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are late because sometimes they're not getting notifications. I'm not. You may have got the notification, Dixie, but I know a lot of people are telling me I'm getting I'm getting more and more messages from people on Messenger saying, I saw you did a live earlier today, but I didn't get the notification like I normally do. So a lot of you are not getting the notific notifications. A lot of you actually are trying to comment. I've gotten messages from people that are trying to comment and they can no longer comment on the live. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't even know how to fix that or tell you to, to go somewhere. So I'm telling a lot of people to go to, uh, actually, let me put this up really quick before I forget. I'm going to put this other banner in the top here. You're going to see the Andy Falco podcast.com. Um, now you're not going to be able to, uh, uh, you're not going to be able to comment on a podcast, but at least if I get shut down completely on Twitter and, and uh, Twitch and Facebook and, um, YouTube, at least you'll be able to hear. I just I just updated my podcast to the most recent um, shows. At least you can go there and still stay in contact while we're sorting it all out. I'm also on Rumble and I'm also on Parlor. I just uploaded a bunch of videos from our, my Facebook Live onto those platforms too. So make sure and go to the Andy Falco Show on Parlor. Andy Falco Show on. Actually, I just did a search on, on Parlor and it, it wouldn't come up for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I know I'm not getting blocked on Parlor, but I don't know that they have something else going on. It, these new platforms are still a little bit clunky. And so not everything is working like it prob probably should. But I am on Parlor. You're just going to have to find me. I do put a couple posts up here and there that you can see and just click on them and they'll take you to my page. Uh, but I am on Parlor and I am on Rumbler or Rumble. Sorry. Um, so you might want to check those out. Uh, I got a notification. I was on a different channel. Just got back. All right, cool. Um, hey, Kimber uh, Kimberly, nice to see you. I appreciate you coming on. Parlor is a pain. Yeah, I'm not. Parlor is not quite there yet. But either was Facebook. Either was YouTube when it first started. I remember not really quite understanding some of those platforms. I couldn't figure out how to advertise on Facebook or YouTube. It was very difficult. They've uh, they've even fixed that. So stay patient with these platforms like Parlor and Rumble and some of the other ones. I think there's another one, uh, not Nitwit. What's it called? Wit something. <laughs> I forget what it's called. Um, but they're all going to be a little bit clunky, and, and then things will improve. All right, let's go ahead and get to um, Mark's message here. And it talks a little bit about the devil. I know that tends to turn people off, people that are new to the Christian faith and people uh, kind of get nervous when somebody's talking about Chris, uh, uh, the devil. Uh, but um, this is where he's at. And this is what he's talking about when it comes to lies. And so I think it's an important message. So let's, let's look at this one first. I'm going to bring myself down, make him the primary on the screen, get rid of my banner. And there we go. All right, here we go. Hold on. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to come back. I, I got paranoid again that I did not click the, the box that allows the audio for the video to actually play. I get a little bit nervous that I don't click that, that I did this time. And there we go. All right, here we go. Everything that God creates, Satan counterfeits. You need to know this. Politics is not neutral. Morality is not neutral. Sociology, anthropology, psychology, all of the ologies, they're not neutral. They're either communicating that which is consistent with the creator or that which is counter to the creator. The same is true even in the entertainment industry. The, the movies that we watch, the songs that we sing, the books that we read, the cultural narratives that we believe, are they in line with that which God creates or they opposed and that which Satan counterfeits. So the next point is knowing these two categories, part of spiritual warfare is discernment. Discernment is saying that is of the Lord, that is against the Lord, and being able to determine that comes from the kingdom of light, that comes from the kingdom of darkness. That's called discernment. God doesn't want you to be naive. God doesn't want you to be jaded. God wants you to be discerning. How many of you are more naive? You're, a little, you're just honest, right? I mean, don't raise your hand too high. Somebody will see it and they'll take advantage of you. Okay, don't raise it too high. You're like, I trust people. I love people. People have a good heart. I give them the benefit of the doubt. Good luck with that. How many of you, you were like that for a while and now, now you're, you're jaded. jaded? You're like, I moved to Arizona because I can always carry a gun. I'm very jaded. So that, that's the part right there I, I really wanted to focus on. And that is that we have a large number of people that are naive. 
um, that we see it every day. I, I see people, very smart people in business, very smart people that have authored books that, I, that I've worked with, very smart people that are masterminds that I have, and they are, I find, I'm finding, are naive. Because they look at these things that I wrote here, and this is one of the reasons I wrote them, especially when it comes to like deportations. I have a couple friends that, um, one that goes to my church and another one that's in, in business, and they know who they are. I've, I've commented on it. <laughs> so I, I'm not being mean by, by they, they know who I, they are. They know that we've had these discussions. I have another guy who's now since passed away who is the same thing. When we're talking about deportation, that it's all about they hate Donald Trump because of what they've heard in relationship to his, uh, um, his thoughts on our border. And when you really look at what he's done, the border, he's improved the border. Uh, it, 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 now we have less deaths at the border. We now have less people that are being arrested at the border. Because why? Because of the, of the, of the wall and the policies that they put in the place. And there's less children being trafficked for, for sex crimes. There's less um, women being trafficked for sex crimes. Um, the less human trafficking for uh, you know slavery and that type of stuff mostly because of the great policies that he's put in place. And one of those things definitely is the building of the wall. And so when you look at this thing right here, you have naive people who believe that under the Obama Biden administration, that somehow the border was more open, that less people were being arrested, less people were dying, less people were having problems at the border. When in fact, if we look at the graph here that I showed last night, I'll bring it back up again, is that you see on the left, all those high numbers in the red and the blue, are deportations and arrests for um, uh, illegal immigration. To the left, it's like the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, that's all the Obama-Biden administration. Those are all, look how high they are. Look how high the numbers are. And again, some of them, the red is the um, interior. And that means the people that are illegal that are found inside the country uh, and you see the high numbers there, the 20, 257,000 people arrested that were in country. That means ICE went out to uh, businesses of, uh, that may, maybe employed illegal aliens. They, they, they went out and served warrants on uh, illegal aliens that had criminal backgrounds or something going on where they had uh, arrest warrants they needed. That's what the arrest, the red, are the rest in the interior. And you see how high the numbers are. You go over to the right. For the four years from 2000, well, three years, 2016, 2017, 2018, look how low the numbers are for Trump. They're actually way lower. Look at the comparison, 229,000 compared to, uh, I can't see the number because it's in the blue there and I can't see. Where's my glasses? Hold on. I got to look at the number. Um, 69,000, 65,000, 81,000, and 95,000. So the, the, the last three years, 16, 17, and 18, 65,000, 81,000, 95,000. That's in the Trump administration. In the Obama Biden administration, you have as high as 230,000, actually 238,000 arrests in the interior. Um, when you look at, at the border, so border removals, yeah, they're as high as 235,000 in the Obama Biden administration. And the high is 174,000 for the Trump administration. And so, again, the naive people, the people that don't do their research, is the problem problem that we have with our media that we have with uh, Pelosi and Schumer and Adam Schiff and other these people that this get these platforms and they begin to speak out. And who are we losing in regard to who they're voting for are the people that are naive. And you hear that all the time. I'll, I have people message me or they'll put a comment and say, you know, I don't watch the news because I just hate it. It makes me sad. You know, I don't, I just watch a little bit. And if they're watching CNN, we got a huge problem. Because if they're watching just enough to hear that Donald Trump is a racist, that he's arresting all these Mexicans because they're Mexican, um, that, um, you know, these killing p uh, children that have COVID-19, this number right here, 33 are the number of children possibly. It, it was more of a comment than any, any kind of research. But I don't even think the numbers that high of children who have died of COVID-19 in the entire United States. And yet we're closing our schools and people go, well, it's not for children. It's that they're going to catch it and bring it home. Want to hear, hear the truth? I had COVID-19. My girlfriend had uh, COVID-19. We both had COVID-19. We both have children. None of our children caught COVID-19. Not one. And we were in the homes. You know, we may have been quarantining in our bedroom, but my daughter, who's 12, who has asthma, which I was very um, uh, uh, hopeful that she would not catch it, she would come into my room and sit on the edge of my bed and bring me food and bring me breakfast and lunch when I was very, very sick, probably at the height of my illness. She did not catch COVID-19. 
None of them did. I have a seven-year-old, I have a 10-year-old, I have a 12-year-old, I have a 14-year-old, and a 26-year-old. All of them here in my home. While I was here sick with COVID-19, not one of them caught COVID-19. Not one of them took it out of his home and got anybody infected. Same thing with my very young girlfriend who did had COVID-19. Her daughter, who's 13, did not catch COVID-19. She has a 21-year-old person that also lives in the same home. She did not catch COVID-19. And, and so this is the ridiculousness of, of these numbers. They're so low and ridiculous that it's just it's, it's, it's lunacy. The children since then have gone, my children had gone to a home where uh, their mother lives and there's a 91 year old woman. She has not co- caught COVID-19 from any of the kids leaving my home. None of them. So it, it's just, it's just bad when we think about closing our schools, closing our economies, co- closing our world because of the lies that you're being told about COVID-19. And yet they say nothing about the 350,000 children that are being killed annually by democratic and liberal policies that they cheer that they're so happy about. But yet they come back and say, Donald Trump is killing people. He wants an open country. He's a maniac. He's stupid. And yet we had a virus. We had a, um, what's it called? A, uh, the, the, the solution. What's the solution called? The shot that you get a vaccine. <laughs> Sorry. I need help from my studio audience. You get a vaccine. And whether, I don't care whether you believe in vaccines or not, or whether you're going to get one. That's not the, the, the point. Vaccines usually take years. Years to be uh, thought about, created, and then approved, gone through all the uh, gone through all the testing, and then be approved for people to use. Years, he's been able to do it in less than a few months. Yet he's still the most horrible president on the planet, and they're already shipping it out. Uh, he put two hospitals, floating hospitals, on the east coast and the west coast, completely um, uh, equipped and prepared for COVID nineteen and other types of patients. They went unused. Uh, the, the army went out and created hospitals in convention centers and in stadiums, hardly used. This you're not being told. The 250,000 people that they claim died of COVID-19, it is believed that 40% of them did not die of COVID-19. They're, think, they're thinking there's 40% that died and happened to have COVID-19. But they died of either a heart attack, they died of cancer, they died of a car accident, they died of a whole number of other things, but also had COVID-19. And they're going down as COVID-19 deaths. If we were to take 40% of those people out, that number is much lower. Now you take out all the elderly people that Andrew Cuomo killed with his horrible policies by taking COVID-19 patients and putting them in the nursing homes, you take out another 20%. And you're down to what out of the entire world, the number of people that have died in the United States is so anticipable. Do people dying, is that a good thing? No. The number doesn't matter whether it's one or 200 people. No, it doesn't matter. It's all bad. But what you're looking at, is, and you are clearly looking at the numbers, liberals and Democrats, and you're saying, Donald Trump killed 250,000 people. For number one, he did not. But again, I go back to this number. You don't care that 350,000 children, most of them black, black communities who you claim to be more um, in tune with than Republicans, which is also not true. We, we've had more Hispanics and, and blacks vote in this election for Donald Trump than ever before. Um, but you have this whole claim. And so again, I go back to the lies and the deceit and the uh, demonic way that our country is being um, communicated with through liberal media, through social media, the, the, uh, the tyrants that run these uh, social media platforms, um, then you have um, people that are just so crazy nuts about certain things on comments. And they, they again, it is the naive. I think that's mostly um, the victim to lies and deceit that we need to worry about. And, it, and it's sad because some of them are getting so upset. You've seen some of the pictures of these people screaming and yelling about, you know, um, uh, Gator, what, what's her name? The Bader Gunswit, whatever the, 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 the Supreme Court. Yeah, that chick, the Ruth, that Ruth lady that died. Um, how when she died, people were going crazy. No, we're not going to be able to kill babies. We're not. And they're going crazy because they think the abortion, oh, that's their whole platform. And then Amy's going to come in and take all that away. They're crazy about that. But they're not crazy about these other things and other things are being lied about. And you see that, right? That, that's, those are naive people that really don't understand what's happening in this world, that don't, don't have faith, don't have Christianity, don't have God in their life. Because if they did, they wouldn't be going crazy for this number. They'd be going crazy for this number. That is what we need to change. That is why we created the Patriot Project. And that's why it's important to get conservative Christian uh, values and thoughts and understand that our country was based off of Christian uh, uh, thoughts and, and um, rules and laws much of it coming out of the Bible. Why? Because that's the best way to run a country. 
to tell you the truth. And I know atheists and all these other people are going to say, well, no, that's not. Yes, it is true. Because everything that's in our constitution, everything that you can see, it was based off of mostly Christian, Christian thoughts and process, because many of them start with God somewhere in the sentence or has God in the, in, in one of the, in some of the platforms or some of the, um, the writings when it comes to the constitution and amendments and that type of stuff. Often God is mentioned on the art of money. God is mentioned. Um, and so you can't get away from it and not understand why it's important that it's in there. It's just a thought. You don't have to be Christian to live in this country. Obviously we live in one of the most diverse country, the most diverse country on the planet. You can go almost anywhere and not see the diversity you see here in the United States, even Canada. All right. And so we, you just have to understand that our country is one of the best countries on the planet for diversity, for um, not being racist and that we're a giving country. And the people that give the most to other countries, the people that give the most within the United States of America are our churches in the Christian faith uh, are the strongest givers when it comes to helping um you know, people that are uh, either poor, people that are struggling, people that have been um, victims of some type of disaster. The first people that go out are the churches and the Christian faith that go out there and help these other other people that are that are struggling. So that's important. Let me see some of these comments. Girlfriend? Yes, I know. I did. It, it kind of slipped out. Uh, and so <laughs> I hope people listen to you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Facts and facts are stubborn things. I know nobody facts don't care about your feelings. Who says that? Charlie Kirk says that uh, facts don't care about your feelings. The facts are the facts. Canada is much worse. <laughs> Trudeau is a jackhole. Yeah, I wouldn't I actually call him something much stronger than that. But I have such good Canadian friends and I feel so bad that when I talk about Canada, I feel bad because I love Canada. I love I love playing hockey in Canada. I love traveling through Canada. I love dog training in Canada. All as a matter of fact, people often ask me back in the day. They said, "Are you Canadian? Because you have an accent." It's because I was in Canada so often doing stuff in Canada that I think that I caught an accent that I would bring back and it would last for a couple of days. Hey, Mark, nice to see you. Why are there twenty five million unregistered evangelical voters? I don't know. I don't know. It, it's crazy, but that's part of why I created. Um, along with Hedia Maramati, uh, why I created the um, the USA Patriot Project, because I think it's that important to figure out why there's 25 million unregistered evangelical voters. It is odd, um, but that's that's what you're going to you're going to hear. They all need to belong to my church or at least they need to follow the church online. And I'm going to play that for you in just a couple of seconds. Uh, and what I'm about to play for you is, is why our church is so different than others. Uh, Jack uh, Hibbs is the pastor at my church, and he talked about when he gave the same message earlier um, and the first um, uh, service that some people walked out. And that's not unusual. Again, th- it brings me back to the truth. The truth has this weird effect on people these days. The truth used to be a good thing, right? Facts used to be a good thing. The r- real science, not fake science, real science used to be a good thing. So you take science, facts, and truth. You put those things together along with this book right here, the Bible, and you it, it's actually pretty good. Even those, it's even good for atheists. It's even good for Muslims. It's even good for other people that live in our country. If we were to stick to facts, science, and truth, and biblical teachings, this country would be way better off. And I know it rubs people the wrong way. And I know it hurts. Uh, and I know that uh, I have a number of people that uh, no longer are my friends because of my feelings. But those, the, again, truth doesn't care about your feelings. The truth is the truth. And that that's the thing that we need to come back to uh, and, and bring some of these people back to voting that um, that need to vote. Uh, I just saw a message going up there. <laughs> I got a message from somebody. All right, my friends. So let's, I'm going to bring you to um, how the church, how the messages start today. If, um, or how uh, my church service started today. And if I, I'm going to put a link, hold on. Let me actually find this link first. Uh, here we go. So I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to put this in the comments. This is the entire message on Facebook, not on YouTube, of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. The lead pastor, the pastor of the church is Jack Hibbs. Um, and again, you need to follow him on, on YouTube and all the other platforms that you can find him on. He's also on Parlor and Rumble. I just found that out today. Um, and you're going to want to listen to the entire message. But I'm going to play the beginning of his message today, which was, again, mostly political but it, it is based on uh, biblical teachings. Uh, but I think it's so important for me to share. It's about seven minutes long, so it's a little bit long. But um, I feel like I should do this because you may not be following necessarily me uh, and uh, the messages that I'm I'm sharing in regard to my church. I think my church does a great job of 
um, helping the congregation understand why it's important that our church is involved politically and why it's important for every church should be involved politically in the United States of America. Because again, it's that important. Oh, this happens. This is how 350,000 babies get killed annually because the churches wasn't involved. They, they thought that, well, we'll just let them, you know, do, deal with it. And then next thing you know, you got 350,000 babies that are being killed, right? It, it's because we, we let it go. We were asleep. We were asleep at the switch. Evangelicals, Christians did not pay attention. They weren't paying attention to what was happening. And this is, again, this is how this happens. This is how all this happens. This is how the Russian collusion happens because we allowed the demons of the Democratic Party and the liberals to come into uh, our country and essentially begin destroying our country. And now we're at, we're at a time right now where we are in a little bit of a civil war. Uh, and it's probably going to get worse before it's going to get better. It does not matter. I'm going to give you one more warning. And again, I hate to tell you this on a Sunday, but it's, it doesn't matter whether uh, all the um, lawsuits come out into favor of Donald Trump or go against Donald Trump. Whoever comes into, into power, it's going to be, there's going to be a little bit of a war, right? And you, you, are, you already know if Donald Trump <laughs> is successful in court and he gets another four years, stand by. Everybody, you may need to actually go out there and get some toilet paper and some paper towels <laughs> because it's going to be bad. Um, but if Biden gets in there, which we know is uh, one of the dumbest things that it, it is just ridiculous. I, and I've, I've done enough shows on it that I'm not going to go all into it. But eventually they voted for this body that no longer has a brain. And then eventually we're going to have this other lady in there, this Kamala Harris, who has she has a brain, but it's not it's not functioning on all cylinders. Uh, either both of them running our, our country is bad, right? Because they really aren't going to be running our country because neither one of them are smart enough to do it. They're going to have people like Bernie Sanders, AOC, uh, Talib, whatever her name is, and these other people that are going to be coming in with their Marxist socialist uh, platforms, and they're going to essentially try to destroy our country. Thank God, uh, we're probably going to have enough people in the Senate and the Congress. I hope. We have this vote coming up in Georgia that we're going to make sure in, and, and hopefully win some of those seats um, that will uh, keep us from going down this road of socialism for four years. And hopefully we'll be able to come back on 2024 and um, and bring our country back if, again, if Biden uh, becomes president. All right. So I'm going to share this message. This is an important message. I would stick it out for the seven minutes that I'm going to share with you. It's something like six or seven minutes. Uh, and this is my church. This is a church. And you, you have a tough time finding any other church doing what our great pastor does. He has the cojones to do what he's about to do or what I'm about to show you. And he did it on three different services today. Uh, and I think it's important. So here we go. So I'm going to share the screen there and bring uh, Pastor Jack on. And oh, I'm already minimized here. Let me fix that. Here we go. All right, here we go. You guys. Um, now, listen, before we get into the study today, um, I've I have to, as a pastor, I must do what I'm about to do. It might upset you, but before you leave, like some people left at first service, let me finish the announcement, or I should say, it's not an announcement, the exhortation, how's that? Exhortation of warning. As a pastor, I'm supposed to call out falsehood, deception, and it's not limited to theological things. If somebody has lied to you and, and you know, it, it, it swindled you out of something in the church family, I'm supposed to know that the church is supposed to know and deal with that kind of stuff. Well, in this case, you're being swindled. Every single one of us, if you are allowing this to take place, what I'm going to show you in a moment, you're allowing yourself to be robbed. And you need to, you need to know this. I'm going to show you some things. I'm, not going to, I'm going to ask you to not laugh because this is dead serious. You're being lied to. You're being deceived. It's intentional. It's well-engineered and well-organized. And if you don't, agree with this lie right now, as of now, then you could get beat up. You could get fired from your job if you don't believe this lie. Are you ready? First, first slide. Listen. Listen, I, I just asked you not to laugh. 
This is dead serious. This is demonic. I'm going to prove it to you in a moment. By the way, I'm not picking on Joe Biden right now. You've missed it. I'm picking on Time Magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, for anyone who cares anymore about the truth, all they had to do is put a question at the end of the word states, and it would have rendered this news cover magazine uh, somewhat accurate anyway. Joe Biden is not the 46th president of the United States. Look, wait, listen. That's not been determined. You need to think about this for a minute. This is so serious. Because you're being, your logic and mind and thinking is being driven by a narrative, and it's clearly the media. You may have seen that picture and thought, nothing wrong with it. That's how duped we're becoming. Now, I posted something on Facebook the other day. I was advised not to do it. <laughs> but it struck a nerve. And it will strike a nerve today. Okay, so here's my Facebook post. I said, this is a test. Can you answer the below questions regarding, quote, the office of the president-elect? And then you hit see more. What year was the office of the president elect created? Listen, Kate, listen. It's a question. I want you to think about it. Everything you see on TV right now in print media is from the office of the president elect. I was, you were given a Thanksgiving greeting from the office of the president elect. You see that federal insignia back there in gold? So you need to answer this question. What year was the office of the president-elect created? Number two, what department of government oversees the office of the president-elect? Is it um, the United States Senate? Maybe it's the House of Representatives. Maybe it's the Supreme Court. Can you explain the image in the link below? But first, as a hint, it's false. It doesn't exist. It's Joe's and the DNC's invention, and many unlearned people are falling for it. The media, I call them co-conspirators, are without question pushing this lie. The election must first be certified by each state. That's not happened yet. In fact, it's not going to happen for a while now if you're watching what's going on. Number two, the Electoral College must vote first. You don't have a president-elect until they say so. Do you understand? That's the law. That's not happened yet. The winner has to receive 270 of the 530 Electoral College votes before you can have a President elect, even still, there's no office of the president elect. So I ask you, what in the world's going on? There's no such office. If you think this is an anomaly, just wait. But people who don't know one stitch of civics are suckers for this. And you know them. There is such a manipulation out there going on. I thank God that we have a constitution still. And that is the answer. That is the determining power. How these 56 signers 230 years ago wrote this stuff up anticipating such things. They're, they were geniuses. Amen. But dear friends, you need to be aware of a big fat lie that's out there. There is no office of president-elect and there is no president-elect yet because it's not happened. Because the election is in huge debate and um, 
criminal activity being initiated to be investigated. Pennsylvania, Michigan, um, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia. And I'm getting pretty excited because there's a team of investigators in California. <laughs> so whatever, whoever you're rooting for, don't get too excited yet because nothing's legal. And some people can't handle that because that's just too much truth for them. They love the media lie. Well, uh, uh, I thank God that we are in the and how it goes and ends. And how it goes and ends is how it goes and ends. It's got to go. But it's got to go. Until it gets to the end. Until it gets to the end. It's very important. Church, I'm going to ask you to stand right now and open your Bibles this morning. stand right now and open your Bibles this morning. And we are going to be looking at. And we are going to be looking at today. All right, my friends. So you heard a couple things that I've talked about before. And that was the, he said something about the unlearned or the naive, right? And that's our problem. When you have these stories about the uh, the the office of the president elect, when you have people telling you that he's the president elect, when nothing has been done yet to to uh, for him to be able to claim or anybody able to claim that he's the president elect, is that you have naive, uh, unlearned people that think that what they're hearing in the media is the truth, what they're hearing they're or seeing that their friends are posting on social media is the truth. It is not, and that is the problem: is that there's so much um, untruths. That's right, right? Untruths being told out there. <laughs> And so looking at my studio audience for helping it um, and lies, essentially just lies being told. And um, it's um, it's something we have to fight against. And uh, and and that is why we need Christian conservative voices always out there. We're going to get blocked just like I'm being blocked. We're going to get throttled. We're going to get um, uh, you have a number of people like uh, Charlie Kirk and um, uh, who else? A number of other people who have had their uh, accounts completely shut down, even. Um, uh, PayPal is cut, has shut some people down. I, and I want to say that Venmo or it was one of the other ones that also shut down their, their account. So they can no longer get, um, uh, you know, paid through YouTube and that kind of stuff. It's just, um, it, it's the truth. The truth is, is obviously, uh, something that people no longer want to hear and they don't want to put it out there. So, uh, I put my, um, URL up there, uspatriotproject.com. Go to that URL and that's where you'll be able to, for at least for now, because, uh, what I'm using is Stripe and uh, PayPal. That you can use either one of those uh, platforms to uh, help us get this uh, project up off the ground so that we can get out there. And uh, that would be a great place for you to go. If you change the .com to .org, that'll send you to the website where you can see more of the stuff that we are, are planning to do. Um, the website will be changing often, so make sure and bookmark it so you can see some of the things. I'll be putting some of the videos on there. And that may be the location where I have to put, because I can use an RTMP code, within the website to actually go live on the website too. just have to go through a little bit of work to be able to do that. I have to get some help on that one uh, with Kajabi to be able to do that. So um, all that, that's the place you need to go. So bookmark both the uspatriotproject.com and .org and that date as to what we're doing. And, and I'll be telling you how you can help. And then some of the projects and programs we'll be having out there to help men be stronger men and women uh, be stronger women. We have a, a couple of things and ideas that we're going to be doing. As a matter of fact, we may be going, to a church uh, in the next couple of weeks where they do some really good training there. And I brought him up before, Mark uh, Driscoll over at Trinity Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. I just want to look at a couple of these comments before I get off here. Uh, Carol, love it. Thank you. I'm so happy that you love it. That makes me happy. It's too bad you're not in California. I know you keep wanting me to go, uh, what are you, North Carolina, South Carolina? I'm so sorry. I always forget where you're at. I, would, I, I, there, I was very close to getting out of the state. They, we need people to fight for the state. I grew up in the state. The state is amazing what we have here. We could, in one day, you could go to the beach and surf. Not that I would have done this, but um, I used to surf back, you know, years ago. But you could go and surf, and then in the same day, uh, you could drive up to the mountains and ski in, in one day. Um, you can go down to San Diego and go to SeaWorld. You can go up to Hollywood and, and see the, the handprints and, and footprints, uh, shoe prints in the, in the cement there in Hollywood. You could uh, do a whole, I mean, the wineries. I mean, this is one of the best states. And the weather is is hardly ever bad. And so to abandon this state and let it just die with feces in San Francisco on the ground, we have an app on your phone so that you can report human feces on the ground and the urination that you can you get out of in Los Angeles, like I have near the federal court where I've had to testify a couple of times, and it smells of urine and, and human waste. 
that it's just we, who's going to stay and fight and not and not allow this kind of state, which is essentially bigger than most countries. The economy is larger than most countries. We can just allow it to fall. Um, somebody has to stick around. And, and for right now, um, I, I, I just feel like this is the place that I need to be and need to start this movement. Um, and like Pastor Jack said, um, um, they are doing some stuff here in California. They're investigating the, uh, the election because I don't believe it either. I, I'm convinced that this state is red right now. Um, and a lot of people don't believe me. They think I'm crazy, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I've, um, I've experienced things here with the rallies that we've been doing and a lot of other things that it just doesn't make sense. Um, and now I know that there's a large number of liberals in Hollywood and that kind of stuff, a lot of money. Um, uh, but I'm not convinced that in regard to all the people, uh, that voted that we, and if, if we're not red, we're not that far. Uh, from being read. The majority of the world is sleepwalking through their lives on autopilot. It's time for lazy sheeple uh, to engage in critical thinking and pass that practice along to future generations. Absolutely. Wow, April, that, this is a great, I'm going to, I'm going to save this one too. Complacency can no longer be an excuse for blind compliance. I love that. That is really good. Um, seriously, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. Absolutely. Uh, GoFundMe is also blocking Trump supporters. Is it really? I didn't hear that. I'm going to, I'm going to check on that a little bit more, but I believe it because they, they're all being run by liberal people, right? And these, they've gone nuts. Uh, and who's making the most money, right? You, you got the liberals who believe that uh, capitalism is horrible, but who's making the most money under this pandemic, right? The same billionaires uh, with Amazon and uh, Twitter and Facebook and all these people are making huge amounts of money. The, the very people that they seem to rail against, that they don't, the liberals have claimed that they're not going to take any big donations for any of these large corporations. And yet they do. Um, and also they're, they're supporting and building uh, an opportunity for these big companies like uh, Walmart and whatever other company out there who's killing the little guy. They, they're, they're shutting down the country, which is essentially killing all the mom and pop restaurants, all the mom and pop stores, all the mom and pop um, uh, feed stores in regard to uh, you know dogs and cats and, and horses. Um, and they're killing those people by these shutdowns and restaurants. If I didn't mention restaurants earlier, but who's, who's actually surviving and doing well are the big corporations that they somehow say are evil and racist and demonic themselves. And yet they're the one that that's who's that's who's doing the, the, the best during these shutdowns. It, it really they are they are whacked out of their mind. They're they're just crazy. North Carolina. I knew it was one of those Carolinas. You can paddle board or hike here, too. Yes, uh, I abandoned California. Yes, Carol, I know you abandoned California. How dare you? Um, all right. Let's see. We've uh, hey, Kelly, can you stir the soup really quick? I think it needs a big stir. Uh, we've taken back so many house seats. We have to be more red right now. I, I, I Carl, you're right. Um, we did win. Uh, and, and I talked about this before that we have the three um, school board members that are Republican conservatives here at the Century of Linda School District. They won. You have the Huntington Beach um, Congresswoman who won. You have Chino Hills Congresswoman who won. Um, and then we had a guy in Pasadena, I believe, not too long ago. One of those uh, L.A. Uh, cities. Uh, Simi Valley, oh, oh, Mike Garcia in Simi Valley one, and so yeah, it's. I don't believe it. I, I, I really do think California is is a lot more red than people are really willing to give us credit. We're not that far off, so we just need to keep on going. Oh no, prayers for your stepdad. Who's stepdad? Sorry, I missed it. You might, uh, somebody mentioned the stepdad. I'm so sorry. Uh, FYI, they have moved my stepdad into COVID unit. Oh, I'm so sorry, Carol. We'll be praying for him. He does not have COVID elderly abuse. Oh, that sucks. You know, I didn't mention, I, I just real quick before I leave, I, I, I mentioned that um, I had COVID-19. My girlfriend had COVID-19. We have small children. Um, none of them caught it. Uh, we, we talked about that. Um, but on my show the other day, I talked about that you also have a large number of people that aren't going to the doctor because of COVID-19, COVID-19, that there was a long space and it, and it still continues to this day where they're saying, you know, call us or do something over Zoom with the doctor and have these discussions about how you're feeling. And um, I know that when I went to the emergency room twice before they knew I had COVID-19, I was sent back home. Right? And so they're not seeing people like they normally do. Um, and if I, if uh, if it's OK, I'm going to mention a, a very close friend of mine who has a father who actually is a doctor who did not go to the doctor's. Right. I'm not sure because of COVID-19, but, you know, people are supposedly dying at the hospital. And then it turns out that they have um, a cancer. They have a, a huge tumor. Now, whether he would have gone to the doctors without COVID-19 or not, I don't know. But you, that he's, that's not that's not an isolated story. You have a large number of people who are not going to the doctors, not going to the hospitals. 
because they were not seeing people for elective um, things. Um, and they were not going because they were told if you go to the doctors, you're going to die. Or you can't go to the doctors because you're going you're gonna to take up a doctor. You're going to take up a nurse who can treat this this huge problem that they were claiming that they had at these hospitals. And so people were not getting MRIs. They were not getting colonoscopies. They were not getting, um, um, you know, um, other procedures to find out where they were and whether they had cancer or not. And so now, because it's been three months, six months or seven months, however long it's been since they first started having some of their symptoms and they thought, well, maybe it'll just go away. Maybe it's just heartburn. Maybe it's just that I have, you know, diarrhea, whatever that is. And now they go in now that now the tumor that they would have caught six months ago, and they would have got it early would not have been a big issue, but now it's a foot and a, a, a foot and a half long uh, and all these kinds of things. And so you have a whole time. We forgot about all those people that are not getting treated, not getting diagnosed, not finding out that they have stuff that if they would have got it early, that now they would not be dying of COVID-19 without COVID-19. They're dying because of COVID-19 because they didn't go to the doctors and get treated, did not get identified as, as having something that could have been treated early on. And now they are in huge uh, uh, trouble and problems because of that thing. So, I'm sorry. I just wanted. I, I thought about the other day. I wanted to talk about that yesterday and didn't talk about it. But it is a problem that we also need to understand, along with suicide, along with depression and anxiety and all the other things, alcoholism, um, um, and um, overdosing on narcotics. Because why? Because they're sitting at home doing nothing else, uh, and all the other stuff, the other moral moral things that they're doing that they shouldn't be doing, uh, and and destroying their soul uh, because they are depressed and anxious and they have nothing else to do. It's just, this is, and they're, they're talking about shutting down our country again for six months. Uh, if Biden gets in, that's what he's going to do. And he's already said it, right? He's going to have a mask mandate and he's going to shut down our country for another six months. That is not going to do not anything but kill people. And so we have a huge problem. All right. Sorry, last one. Same here. Been in the year twice in the last week. No COVID. Some, uh, some else serious enough, but they sent me home when I should have been admitted. I, 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 I would... I don't want to talk bad about Kaiser, but because they did an amazing job once they found out I had COVID-19. But the second time I went to the emergency room, they put me out in the parking lot on a folding chair for three and a half hours. Uh, and I was not. It was one of the worst days that I had. And that was not good. Why? Because they did not. I had not been diagnosed with COVID-19 yet and they didn't know what to do with me. And so they said, go sit in the folding chair. And I sat there for three and a half hours and it was, it was miserable. I was not a happy camper. And then they sent me home. I got sent home. I returned because I had trouble breathing and then they admitted me. So I, 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 I've told you that having COVID-19, one of the best things that happened to me over the last 2020, there's a lot of things that are some of the best things that happened in 2020 um, because it gave me information. Uh, it allowed other great things to happen within my family. And so I choose to look at the positive. And so I've kind of left the, the, the couple of negative things out, but, um, but I have experienced some things that could have been done better. And uh, it's because of the lies that people are being told. All right. And so I want to make sure that, and, and end on that note, that this was the show about getting the truth, hearing facts, not being afraid of facts, uh, protecting the naive and the unlearned, the people that are just simply afraid of learning something new and hearing the truth. We we have to do something to help um, the naive uh, in, in this case because they're they're being told a lot of things that just are simply not true. All right, all right, my friends, uh, got to finish making dinner here for the kids. It's getting late. They got school tomorrow, and uh, they get to go back to school tomorrow. They they've been quarantined because I got sick with COVID nineteen, and tomorrow's their first day back to school for at least three of them. Three of the four are going back to school, so we're gonna have a good day tomorrow. Carl Whitney, nice to see you. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, the guy who likes to quote the palms, Palmas fractured his ankle today. Maybe he had a stroke. <laughs> oh, oh God. I hope not. All right, my friends. Uh, I love you guys. God bless and uh, have a great rest of your Sunday and a great, great week. We'll be praying for all of you. Um, and Carol's stepdad who, um, is a victim of elder abuse. We're gonna make sure, um, and pray for him tonight uh, for his healing. All right, my friends. I love you. God bless. 